Amen, wisdom, stand and pray. Let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. And to your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to the Evangelist St. John. Glory to the Lord. And at that time, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses, in the law, and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I saith unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Glory to the <laughs> the rigors of winter. I hope that's what it is. At the beginning of our gospel, Jesus said to Philip, follow me. Our life is full of choices. And, of course, that was a choice that Philip had made. When Jesus said to him, follow me, was he going to do it or not? It's true, there's many choices in life. Some things we can't choose. Where you're born, who your parents are the color of your skin is, perhaps what your physical stature is, some things you can't choose. But there are some things you can choose. And it's the spiritual choices, I think, of all the things that we can choose that really matter the most. There are choices that we make that aren't spiritual, like, well, they are spiritual in a way. I guess who you're going to marry is a spiritual choice, right? Should be. But there's choices like where to go to school, whether you're going to study hard tonight or not, and things like this that, you know, the choices we make every day, how we're going to live our lives on a daily Manner. The most important choice we'll ever make is this choice that was given to Philip, to follow Jesus. Right? That's the most important choice. But I think there's a second choice that comes out in our readings today that is almost equally important. It's not just whether I'm going to follow Jesus or not, but it's who I'm going to follow him with. Who do I follow Jesus with? Moses chose to follow God. In the book of Hebrews, it says that he chose to follow God. And he chose, in following God, the people of Israel. Today is our Sunday of Orthodoxy. It's the triumph of the icons, of the veneration of icons over the iconoclasts, the dualism of, of uh, the Muslim world that was creeping into the Christian realm, and this idea that matter was always going to be evil, and you couldn't depict God, and so on and so forth. All these things were put to rest in the church on the Sunday of Orthodoxy. And so it is that we celebrate something in our church, the survival of the church, the gates of hell, the Lord said, won't prevail against it. It's firm, it's like a rock, it's like Christ, it's his body, it's going to endure. And so when we choose to follow Christ, we need to follow the place and the people to follow him with. And that is the Orthodox Church. We choose Christ, yes, but we also choose his church and we choose his people. And when we do that, we put ourselves in a place where we can truly and completely follow Christ. There's many places we could choose to park ourselves as Christians today. I, I, 20 years ago, there was 43,000 denominations in the United States. Imagine that. 43,000 different views of how to follow Christ. But none of them other than the true church, the Orthodox Church, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church have been around since the beginning proclaiming the same message in Christ, that have triumphed over things and heresies that have come in like the iconoclastic heresy and still stand today 
preaching the gospel of Christ and preaching the Christ that you can rely on and that you can follow. Well, it was Moses who decided in our passage in Hebrews to follow Christ today in a way that was indicative of how we should follow him. It was not only just following Christ, but where we follow him. By faith, it says, when Moses came to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You know, Moses had it in the earth really good. He had a good gig. He was put into a basket, hard beginning, but he wound up as the son of Pharaoh. He was the guy who was at the top, right next to the, the, the royal family, living right in the midst of all the splendor of the palace, had his life just, it was, it was better roses going forward. He had everything that the world could offer. And yet it says in the scripture that Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Being called the son of Pharaoh's daughter was a big deal. When you got in your chariot and rode through the streets, everybody would bow to you. He was like the king almost. It was a big deal to refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It says he refused that and instead he chose, it said. He said it was, he said it was choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Moses made a choice. It's a, it's a clear choice between two vastly different paths. One to be called the Pharaoh's son, part of the royal family. The other to suffer affliction. I think he made a choice that was, I would think, humanly speaking, very difficult to make. It's harder than the choice that you and I have to make. There's less glory to forsake in a way, right? I don't think any of us here are in that position anywhere close to Moses financially, as far as the pride and power of the world and life in the world is concerned. Nowhere near that same status. We're not turning our back on that much, my brothers and sisters, compared to what Moses did. And yet it says he chose to suffer affliction instead with, it says, the people of God. You see, he looked on to a reward, it says. He said, it says he esteemed the reproaches of Christ more greatly than the riches of everything that Egypt could give him, all the treasures of Egypt. He had respect, it says, under the recompense of the reward by faith. By faith, Moses made a choice. And he made a choice to forsake all the earthly glory and instead follow God in light of the reward with the people of Israel. This is what Moses did. And it's an example for us. When we choose to suffer reproaches with Christ, we're turning our back on something and we're turning to something. It's a choice we make. It's a choice that we're making right now in Lent, right? We as a community are deciding to go into a hard place. We're journeying on a hard path together and we do so by our free choice. Nobody is holding a gun in our heads saying, do this, deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow me. Nobody's telling us that we have to do this. We make a choice. We suffer. Some we do. We're not suffering. You need to turn the heat up on yourself a little bit. But it says in the scripture that we do so in light of a reward. All the good things that we see in this world, we turn our back on in a way when we decide to follow Christ. And it's only in the Orthodox Church that we truly get the path laid before us of the suffering that God desires. It will make us new men and new women. It's kind of linked to the gospel in a way when Nathaniel was sitting there listening to Jesus and realized that Jesus was God and he could see everything. He knew the past, he knew the future, he knew the present. Nathaniel saw a little glimpse of God and Jesus told him, you know, what you're seeing right now is nothing compared to what you're going to see when the heavens are open to you. Speaking not just of the transfiguration, but also of the glory of the eternal kingdom that will enter. So it was that Nathaniel stuck with the people of God, seeing a little bit of glory, but also suffering reproach. So did Moses with the people of Israel. You look at Moses' life, it wasn't really a better Moses, was it? He had people rebelling against him all the time. And yet it's, he still stuck with the people of Israel, like Peter did. Peter said, Whom to, who else can we go to, Lord? Where are we going to go? The Orthodox Church is like that. Where else are we going to go? Where else are we going to go to fully join ourselves to Jesus Christ, to engage and follow together something, a path to heaven, a place where we'll see the 
heaven's open. And where we as a unit experience the same things, we suffer, yes, but we see these hard things in light of how the glory is going to be. We have an idea of the recompense of the reward, just like Moses. We suffer now with the saints, both heavenly saints that are encompassing us about, and the earthly saints sitting in the pews next to us. We suffer together, and at the same time, we do, like Nathaniel, get a glimmer, I think, of the glory to come. Sometimes in services, sometimes when I'm praying, sometimes when I'm singing, I get a glimpse of the Holy Spirit's blessing. It's just a foretaste of the opening of the kingdom of God. Perhaps you do too. Perhaps even in this Lent, in the last week of service, you had that moment or two or three of God drawing really close to you, like Nathaniel did, and we really realize how great God is. That's just a glimmer of what is coming for us. But if we're going to fully be embraced by God, we need to embrace him. We need to make the choice, like Moses did, to join ourselves to the people of the Orthodox faith, people that are following God, to follow her call to denial, to reproach, and to hardship, even. And we choose this in faith, knowing fully that someday God's going to fully open the kingdom to us. It's not all doom and gloom here now, but it can be a difficult path. But it's the only path. It's the only place we can go. If you want to taste the fellowship of the saints and get some of that closeness to God that Nathaniel experienced in that moment when Jesus revealed to him his past, then we need to fully engage ourselves. To the measure of our strength, I think, everyone's strength is different in following this obedience that we have here in Lent. To join ourselves to the church, to deny ourselves, to put off the old man, to put on the new man, so that someday we can meet God in his glory. And hear the call, servant, well done. Moses gave up a lot to choose to be with the people of God. His life would have been vastly different had he gone on as being the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But instead, he chose a path in faith, seeing the heavens opened in a, just a small way, but knowing someday God would open them fully for him. He chose that path. And brothers and sisters, we have that choice to make today, and every day, really. Are we going to follow Christ? The answer should be yes. If we are going to, then who are we going to follow him with? Choose your place. Be loyal to your place that God wants you to be in. And labor together with the saints so that you can hear his call in the heavenly kingdom and fully enjoy the bliss thereof. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.